Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video, we're going to be summing up this 1940s pinafore dress. This is a dewberry pattern that I inherited from my husband's grandmother. It's from 1943 or 1947. I'll have to double check that and I'll put it up on the screen. Um, this initially had a long ruffle all the way down to the bottom of the dress and it went on both sides. I eliminated that. I've made a dress very similar to this, a maternity pinafore from the 1940s that had that ruffle. And I did, throughout my pregnancy and throughout the summer, I did not end up liking the ruffle on there. I think it looked nice, but as day-to-day -day practice, I did not um, enjoy having it there. It was kind of a distraction. It was just too much fabric right here around my face and neckline. I didn't like wearing it when I was strapped into a seatbelt so I decided to eliminate that however this dress is really special because it is a maternity um, not maternity but nursing friendly dress and basically I made it to where I can nurse without having to have buttons down the front or wear a shirt waist dress so if you're interested in seeing how I did that please stay tuned thank you so much again for watching this and um i'm a little dressed down right now because i decided to take opportunity to film this intro while it was dead silent in my house so thank you guys so much for watching and at the end you'll see a styled clip of the whole dress and hair and makeup and everything thank you so this is dewberry pattern 5839 it's a very simple pattern it's a pinafore with buttons all the way down the back and has those ruffles when i first inherited this pattern five or six years ago i didn't know how to sew so that was a motivation for me to learn how to sew but then when i did open it about a year or two ago i realized that the pattern piece was missing and it was the ruffle now this was an issue for me at first until i realized i didn't like the ruffle when i made the maternity version of this dress so now I was ready to cut it and I want to say that I use snaps for the closure however you can use an invisible zipper or velcro or any closure that you feel like would be best I thought one snap on each side would work perfect for me but if you have a bigger bust that might not be the case depending there is a pretty decent amount of overlap so if you do, um, if the bust flexes, it doesn't show anything, but I have a smaller bust size, so I couldn't tell you for sure. However, it works perfectly for me. So I actually draped this on my own body to figure out where exactly I wanted the opening to be. So I think this will be good for both sides. So I'm gonna use some fabric marker and mark the um, slits on both sides. So when I put the side front pieces on it I will know not to sew over these sections but I'm going to go ahead and serge this side on both pieces first and then start working on that and so I'll do the complete the front and the back separate and then join it at the shoulder seams and then ease in the sleeve which I'm gonna have to make shorter simply because I don't have enough fabric to do it the complete length so I'm gonna mess around with that too so it's important to note that when I was sewing this dress, the seam allowances were all a half inch. With an exception to the underarms seam allowance and the seam allowance down the underarms and the side was three fourths. So always keep in mind to read the entire pattern instructions because sometimes the pattern will tell you to do one seam allowance unless stated otherwise. And in this case there was. Okay, so now that the side panels are put on, I'm going to show you my idea. So this part is left open. I'm actually going to close this up a bit because the side is not as wide. So I'm going to close this up about an inch. And then basically I will put some seam binding down there. So it's like nicer looking. And I will run hand sew some snaps down the side and hand sew snaps on this little piece and so then we'll just snap it down when it's no longer in use and that way down the road uh, when I'm no longer nursing if I don't want to leave this open I can just use an invisible stitch and close it up so that's what we're going to do so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the entire back portion 
of the dress and then I'm going to bring it together. This dress did not have any facings with it for the neck. So I had to draw my own or draft my own. It required you to use seam binding, but since I was already limited on how much fabric I had, I didn't have enough to do proper seam binding. So I just used the wonky scraps to make a facing instead. And I like this better. It sits nicer and it doesn't require me to do so much sewing around the neckline because I can just tack the facing down. Um, at the corners on the seam allowances. This dress sews up so quickly. It's so beautiful. It's lightweight. It's perfect for the summer, um, depending on what fabric you use. Of course, I use a simple cotton. I intend on wearing this as a house dress, so this will definitely get a lot of daily wear. I wear it in the house, and I think it looks nice enough that I can wear it to the grocery store or anywhere else I want to as well. It also looks really nice with an apron, and I'm really, I'm really happy for this make. So don't forget to understitch your neckline so that everything lays nice and flat. So this is the facing understitched at the collar, so that way it doesn't, I mean at the neckline, so it doesn't roll. And so once I get this completely assembled, I'm going to tack the facing to the seams, but I'm going to put press the seams towards the center so that way so that way whenever I add my snaps to it, this section will be pointing towards the center and then this one will come over like that. So I'm going to press all of the seams towards the center. So my sleeves are going to be a little shorter than intended because this is all the fabric that I'm left with. There's going to be, look at all of this, this is missing and I don't have any other fabric. This is, this is it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and put it down on my left side and then I will assemble the whole right side of the project for you guys to see. So I made the mistake of sewing all of that footage and forgetting to hit record. So here I am sewing up the side seams and then I'll be showing you my finishings like the buttonholes that I put in and then the buttons that I chose. I wanted to do some really cute buttons so instead of doing um, the standard button I decided to use some daisy buttons and right now I'm adding a face seam binding to the bust openings so that way you don't see that ugly surged edge when I open it up and this was just this was not caught in the bias it was just cut straight because like I said I didn't have enough to do bias facing and now I'm attaching those cute flower buttons with a yellow thread so that way it kind of looks like a daisy on the inside Hey, it's me. Before we get into the final look, I wanted to share with you a small business and it's Stephanie Canada's shop and it's Backroom Finds. That's the name of the shop. And in that shop, you can find really gorgeous vintage patterns. Um, she reached out to me to send me a pattern and also to give me a coupon code to share with you guys. So I wanted to mention this because when I was on there searching for a pattern for myself and to purchase, I noticed that this dress pattern was on her website. So if you want to grab this pattern and make it for yourself, whether it's for nursing or not, please go visit her website. I'll leave a link for it in the description box, but also use coupon code SORINA25 and you will get 25% off of your first purchase. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And I will show you the reveal of this dress. So here is the completed dress. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I'm really excited to show my husband's parents this dress. Um, please let me know if this is something you'd be interested in making. I do plan on making another nursing friendly dress, but this time it's going to be a full skirted, different styled bust dress from the 1950s. I hope I can get to it before the summer and springtime is over, but if not, I'll just share my idea anyway so someone else can make it. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. My birthday is coming up so I don't know if I'll have time to post any more sew with me type videos but I will definitely have some special projects coming up. Follow me on Instagram and I'll see you in the next one.